Is Tom sitting out here? Hello, Tom. Hey, man. How was it out here? How you doing, you little turd? Well, I need to read something to you guys. Who all's out here? Well, Harry's out here. I didn't get DDD's name. Uh, Chase, it's Kilo Charlie 3, Delta Delta Bravo. My name is Gary Golf, Alpha Romeo Yankee. Okay, Gary, and now Tim. Alright, give me one second to find it. I need to read something to you guys. I'm going to pass some third party traffic, I guess is what it's called. If I can freaking find it here. Oh, hold on, do I get back? Yeah, me too. I gotta run to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Jimmy, you well left. Uh, entry I 10 for ID, by the way. Piss break, cafe DD. Roger, roger. Gotta go water the worms. So, anyway, our buddy Riley uh, sent me an email. Oh, pray tell. Yeah, right. Yeah, you didn't bother doing that when I set a record as W1AW stroke three. He didn't do that when I set a record doing field day this year. He didn't do that when I worked all zones or did DXCC I don't know how many times over. You know what I mean? It's it's like, you know. Seem to have missed all of all of my um <laughs> my accolades, right? Evidently. Yeah, but he's got me on uh, the uh, <clears throat> series of events that occurred, I guess, Saturday night. Uh, I don't remember what happened Saturday night. It kind of all runs together at my age. Yeah, me too, you know? And I don't know that I'm going to blame it on Sam Adams. I think I'm just getting too old for this shit. But I, I feel, honestly, wholeheartedly, actually... Now, what he's saying to me and or us, well, to me, I don't know if he CC'd anybody on that. Did he CC? Actually, he did CC. Who is K4ZD8? K4ZDH? Yeah. I should look that up. Riley. Who is it? Matt Riley? Oh, so he sent it to himself from himself. Okay, so he's just emailing off. <laughs> By the way, you know that whole Babel program thing where you can learn languages in, like, your sleep? She? Yeah, they don't have a Chinese version. <laughs> you know, with Biden taking office and all that, I, I thought that was pretty interesting that they just, you know, they've got various versions of Mandarin and stuff, but they don't have, like, Chinese. I think they need to get on the stick. Because apparently uh, California... Wrangled in their votes today and uh, sent him to 320 or whatever, and and, and we're going to be in <laughs> the Sleepy Joe and the Sleepy Ho. Imagine that. That's catchy. It is catchy. Anyway, I guess we're waiting for dub 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 two dub 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 and someone else. The dub is just listening here, getting ready for polishing the boots. Don't look at me when you say that. Oh, yeah, they're talking eleven, twelve inches of snow around here. That's a lot for us at the coast. Yeah, that's what they're saying. And, you know, I saw this Friday, right? The um, National Weather Service said that the rain snow line is going to be down around the I-95 corridor and you can expect 12 inches of snow up here. And when I started telling people up here that we're going to get a foot of snow, they're all telling me I'm talking out my ass and blah, blah, blah. They haven't seen any reports about any predictions and any amounts and yada, yada, yada. Well, today, all their phones lit up with 12-plus alerts because <laughs> they're talking about 18 inches. Yeah, that beats me by six. Well, that ain't hard to do. Well, snow on the ground this morning here. 
Yeah, it snowed today, and so everything's coated right now. So, you know, not the streets. Well, actually the streets, there's like glaze on the streets still, but the the grass, the grassy knoll is coated. So all the, it, it has that, you know, you can see the grass through it, but it's it's all coated. It's, it's encased right now. And, um... Our temps are dropping. The last time I looked, we were at 34 degrees, and they're going south. And probably by morning, we'll be in the mid 20s, and um, stay that way most of the day tomorrow. Even though we're going to have a lot of sun, we're going to have a lot of wind, and it's just going to hold them right there. And then by midday, Wednesday, I guess it is, we're going to start seeing the precip, and it's just going to snow until Thursday morning. That just reminded me, I forgot to do specific gravity on my battery bags. I was telling Dominic he needs to get that battery out of his motorcycle in the shed or he's going to lose it because, you know, this kind of cold shit beats them things up. Yep. <laughs> but, you know, kids will be kids and maybe that's a lesson he needs to learn. Oh, and they're squeaky. How you doing, squeaky? Do you want me to read the email, squeaky? Are you sitting on the edge of your little uh, porta potty seat there? That that little high re- high. What do they call those things? You know, with the handrails and the seat that sits above the seat on the actual toilet. I told you, you, were you told me I was what? Yeah. You told me I was what? I can't understand what you're saying. Take the dick out of your mouth, would you? Why do you want me to read? I'm not reading the email to you. I'm reading it to my friends, not you. I will. When they're when they've all gotten done shaking off the last drop, grabbing a beer, sandwich, crackers, cheese, whatever the hell they want to do before they settle back in front of their radio to put up with your sorry ass. Okay, I'm back. Give me two wireless. So Riley says, and this came in at uh, 5.35 p.m. December 12, 2020, in bold text. Could you please rein it in somewhat on 3860, question mark? Now, if that's not enough to make you laugh, I don't know what is, but I get it. And then here's where it gets good. So the body of the message is, I'm working with the AWR and the FCC on the volunteer monitoring program, a joint effort regarding enforcement. Your actions on 3860 are doing the amateur radio service a lot of damage. We are about to get into some discussions with the solar power industry over radio interference from their quote-unquote optimizer devices on super large solar fields that tear the hell out of amateur radio, and it's not clear that Part 15 of the regulations would help us. All it would take is for one of those guys to bring in some tapes of what you sound like. Then we would be screwed if we had to go to congressional subcommittee for help on that issue. It would be a, it would be game over. I'd appreciate if you think about the bigger picture. Seventy threes. Thanks. All right, for Mister Rowling Hollingsworth. So apparently now the FCC's he's asking. been here. Apparently he's been subject to the bullshit that we have to put up with. But the problem is, he's calling me out on it instead of Squeaky and Squeaky's little douchebag friends, which is fine. I got broad shoulders. I can take it. Hey, Tom. Very interesting. Tom. Yeah. Yeah, I was just down on, uh, you know, where Mike and Joe and them hang out on 44. And uh, I guess it was down there, Corman. You know, I ain't mentioned any names. But, uh, yeah, yeah. For no reason whatsoever. And a lot of people got recordings of this guy. If you need any, let me know. So, Squeaky, apparently, 
Um, you've been identified? Yes, by the tone of his voice, the raspiness, the sound signal, the IP address, and a lot. And apparently they're asking me to step aside and they're going to take care of you themselves. Yeah, Hollingsworth mentioned this. He even has it. I even have it. I can play it to you. He's on tape, on a, on a, on tape with the ARRL, with these voluntary monitors, which are ham operators, saying that a lot of the migration from, what is it, uh, what, what was the frequency, 413 or some shit, you know, 31313 or something, they migrated up to here. And he's on tape saying that they're going to clean this frequency up. So I'm going to forward this to uh, into OIM and, uh, and Possum, and those guys can forward it on to whatever. But, you know, it's, it's no bullshit. It's the real deal. I mean, the guy reached out. And, you know, I, I don't know Riley at all. I mean, I've read about him in QST. I've heard about him from a number of people over the air. For a long time, I, I was I was actually surprised. I didn't know, honestly. I didn't know he was still involved. I I thought he was done. But anyway, you know, I don't know him from Boo. I don't know if he's good, if he's bad, or, or you know what I mean. It, you know, but whatever. He reached out and asked that I knock it off, and so. I got to knock it off. And so, you know, if I come out here and I'm not my, um, <laughs> if I'm, if I, if I less than enchant you, this is what. I like your new Christian attitude. Yeah, more to be mild. Remember, it's not what a man puts in his mouth that defiles him, but what comes out. Well, the guy asked me for a favor, right? I mean, he, he, you know, if if Mikey or, or Possum forwards you the email, you'll you'll see. I mean, he was down to earth. He was straightforward, and um, you know, and how can you not respect that? You know, KFADD. And the WW2WW yeah. agrees with it. Game East v. YLF. Yeah, Mr. Hollingworth's a pretty level-headed guy. He retired, and that's the only way he can clean stuff up. They have to go to the ARL to get it done. I wonder what he'll send to me. You don't send me flowers anymore. But, well, I guess... What I'm getting at is I I appreciate that kind of straightforwardness and and um you know the guy's got balls, dude. I mean you know let's face it, he reached out. Uh, he, you know I'm not one of the even though I try to be you know I'm not one of the nicest guys out here. You know I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, and I put up with this shit for so long that I, I'm just burnt out. I guess you know. And no matter how many attempts I've, you know, made at trying to, like, you know, squelch this crap, it just gets worse every time, you know? And, uh, you know, apparently he's listened or heard or, you know, more than once because, you know, it, you know he could have rained, you know, all kinds of whatever on me and he didn't. And I was like, hey, dude, you know what? You know. So it was clean, it was concise, it was polite, it was professional, it was, it was, it was, it's good stuff. And so for that, I will respect him to the highest degree. You know, you know what I hope though? I don't know if anybody else, maybe Jim, maybe you know, uh, Tim, maybe you know, you know, um, you know, being that he's joined the ARL, I hope they have the power to go to a different country like Canada and actually impose some kind of something on these people that are that are forming the frequencies uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, moving from frequency to frequency, following people like us to even 160 to form. I hope he has the power to take another country on and say, hey, look, here's a bad guy. So, 
So I guess something I need to ask, and this doesn't make you good, bad, or indifferent. It's just a question. How many of you guys are ARRL members? I've been occasionally a member here and there. I drop in and out. I'm not. How many of you guys own guns? Own guns? Yeah. I don't. And how many of you who own guns are NRA members? I am. Me and my wife both are. I am. I'm also an AMAC member. And so, you know, I, I've i been an AWR member, you know, on and off forever. You know, I mean, let's I jumped in and joined when I first got licensed. And when I got out of the hobby, it, you know, what's the sense of paying for it? Then when I got back in and out, you know, the, the hobby for me, I'm, I'm in and out, you know. But every time I get back in, I sign back up. And just like NRA, you know, every time I put away or sell guns and get this interested and then I get back in, I sign back up. And so if you're not an AWRL member and you have ham radio and you do ham radio and you're active on ham radio, you should probably sign up. Uh, and likewise, if you have guns and you shoot and you, you know, you should probably join the NRA. Just keep these, these, these things that keep us in our things going. Well, they become the voice that you couldn't be by yourself. That's the positive thing about it. And the only problem with the ARRL not having a lifelong membership that's reasonable, that's part of the problem. I wish, you know, for 10, what they should do is if, you know, you've been a member for a certain amount of years, it goes towards the credit. And uh, they, they need to make the lifelong thing a little more f feasible. It's a little too expensive. Last time I checked, what, 600 Back when I got my license, I think it was like twenty five dollars. <laughs> it was like some ridiculous thing, and I was like, Ah, yeah, yeah. What about you, Possum? You a lifelong? Somebody's calling Possum. Yeah. Who is it? Hello, CEO. Fucking axe. Oh, don't don't threaten me with violence. Don't. Oh no, is that that fucking um that Dago fuck? What the fuck is his name? Shalom, shalom. Relax. Um, you know what what what's his, what 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 did people call him? You uh, suck as much as you did before, Joe. Get the fuck. Uh, Joe Italiano, is that who that is? Uh, oh my God, really? He's back. Yeah, I'm right here. Well, what's going on with you and Riley there, Tommy boy? Over. Hey, Joe. Yeah. Hey, Joe. You hear me? Yeah. You got a copy on me, man? I do. I do. How you been, man? I've been wonderful. Well, how are you? Oh, it's been a long time since I heard from you. Yeah, I know. I've I've heard these rumors. I get these emails on all this stuff that's going on. And what's going on with you and Riley? Over. Well, so Riley decided to take your position. Why are you ball sucking Joe? <laughs> Why are you uh, ball sucking this fucking douchebag from Illinois? I don't understand I the Joe. terminology. Joe's a good guy. I love Joe. Joe sucks fucking cock. <laughs> no. Joe's a good guy. I love Joe. Joe sucks fucking cock. He's, he's, uh, got, he's got his name on the first rope on the fucking gallows that I built. No, I love this guy. Hey, hang on. Let, oh, hey, that's Joe. terrible, Tommy. Why are you so angry? Oh, Joe. Oh, come on. So anyway, Joe, Riley took your position. When you left, he, he filled the void. Well, I could tell you a lot of stories about Riley. He's been very busy. I hope he goes back to the list. I'm first on the list. You guys aren't going to let me do it, are you? Maybe, uh, maybe my radio's not working. Yeah, maybe my fucking brain's not working. Oh, you hope for that, Joe. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
I thought I'd give you guys a break for about nine months and I come back and, boy, I, I'm not feeling the love. You still well, I'm trying to share the love with you, but they're, they're being a little hostile I'm towards you. I'm trying to calm down a certain situation there, Machine Gunner. Go fuck yourself, you fucking douchebag. So you are open your dad from COVID, Joe. Hobby, Go away. Isn't it? It's about lots of fun. Joe, you fucking pushed it so far beyond the hobby for fucking five years. There's no fucking, uh, there's no relenting on it. Well, I've, I've been hearing all of that. I've been getting these emails, and they sound like there's some kind of a, some sort of a major disconnect here, you know? Uh, up to, Tommy up there in, uh, where is he at? Pennsylvania somewhere. He's in a fight with the Canadian farmers, and Riley's beating on Tommy, over. Yeah, but I'm trying to help you out and hook you up and let you know what happened with Riley and how he took your place and, you know, and all that. But th these guys, they just have too much animosity against you to let that happen, so I'm not going to be able to, to hook you up. Um, well, I could provide you some information because, uh, you know, you, you're not the only one. You're not the only one, over. I understand there's about 15 of us, but what, what I was getting at was, you know, when you disappeared, Riley saw a void and he jumped in. Riley's just another nobody fucking ham. He has no authority over anybody. And I got to tell you, fuck him and fuck his friends twice. Wow, you're pretty brave. You're pretty brave there, n one uzi Yeah, really. Yeah, come and get me. Well, you, do you know who brought him here, right? You need to think about that. What? I said you need to think about who brought him here. You. It wasn't me. Yeah, it was you. <laughs> no? You fucking asshole. No? You're still as angry as ever. I still see it. That's gonna that's gonna hurt you someday, Tommy. You know, you I had him right there on the hook, and you guys just won't let me do it. Well, I'd like to talk to you up there, uh, uh, ITN, but uh, this guy from Kentucky, he's got a grudge. He's holding a grudge. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, he's uh, very open. Uh, he's very open and helping uh, helping people. Oh, by the way, the guy that came down from 29, uh, uh, 3927. The guy that came from 3927, his name is, uh, uh, let's see, Thrower. What's his first name? Uh, he formed me for about two years. Casey Thrower. Casey Thrower. His call is N4GKS. Uh, N4GKS. Uh, George. Uh, looking for your gravestone so I could fucking snap it in half. Good. I don't threaten anything, Joe. I promise. Well, what are you going to do to me? 
I'll hang you by your fucking neck if I ever come in contact with you. Well, you think I would just let that happen? No, you're not going to see it coming. <laughs> you don't have the skills, boy. Oh, you don't fucking think so, huh? You don't know where I'm from, scum. Yeah, okay. <laughs> You need to relax, Tommy. It's going to kill you. You need to fucking die, Joe. Well, I'm getting there. I'm good. The sooner the better. I was just trying to give you some information on N4GKS. I don't know. I don't need information on N4GKS, Casey. I don't give a fuck. He's a guy. I don't care, Joe. He's the guy that came down here and told you to, you know what, to his you know what. I know who it was. Well, I'm just telling you, he hangs on 3927. I already fucking knew that. Okay. See ya. Bye-bye. Let the fucking door hit you in the ass and don't come back. I was trying to talk to the other Tommy. No, you weren't. Yes, I was. Well, that's not what I've been hearing. I've heard just the opposite. Yeah. I've heard you've been in a battle with all sorts of quarmers and no one can hear anything and, and Riley sending uh, 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 Tommy up there, ITN, all sorts of emails and letters about his language. AC1 and DD. Defect, just like all the other squirmers. That's absolutely not true, and you know it. Mentally defective, Joe. That's not true. It is true. It is true. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. Hey, when you're selling those reloads, uh, what happens if one of them goes kaboom in somebody's gun? Who gets sued? I didn't sell any reloads, Joe. Where the fuck did you hear that false information? You just make it up. No, you said you were doing them on consignment at some gun shop. They were reloads. What were they? They were factory ammunition. Well, I thought you said you were selling reloads. Well, you sound fucking wrong, asshole. <laughs> I just wonder, when it goes kaboom, who gets sued? They're going to sue you because I'm going to tell them that you gave them to me to sell, and they're going to come after your fucking stupid ass. Uh, I don't think there's any proof of that. Well, I was just thinking through the legal ramifications of what you're doing. I was just trying to yeah. just trying to uh, figure that out. Before, Joe, go away. Well, you know, if somebody's gun goes kaboom and they got ammunition that came from you, you know who gets sued, right? KDHWBQ 1110. I'm just trying to tell you that there might be a legal issue. There may be a legal issue. No free lunch, Tommy. No free lunch. Obama! All right. Obama. What am I going to pay you to go away, Joe? Uh, not very much. How much? Not very much. Well, name a price. Well, I wanted to talk to the other Tommy, but he seems like he's left now, so I'm going to be quiet. Maybe he'll come back. Name a fucking price, Joe. <laughs> Zero. I'm going to leave now. I just want for you to go away. I just want to talk to the other Tom. Well, go to another fucking frequency because we were having a QSO here before somebody broke in and then you came in. Get the fuck out of my life. I was talking to Tom and then you came in and talked over the top of him. I have been by one. This is revisionist history at, at its best. It's I'm, a road joke. I'm being a fine business operator and I'm going to st stand by. AC1DD. Fucking asshole until you're late in your grave. And that may happen fucking sooner than you think. Yeah, but it'll never happen from you, boy. No, you don't know that, Joe. I know it for a you fact. Do not know that. Because you're a coward. You do not know that, Joe. AC1DD. AC1 double dildo douchebag. So, back to our conversation, Tarkin.
So you want to talk to me now? No, I'm just, uh, I'm just putting it down. You can write it in the dossier. I just wanted to talk about those reloads that are being sold. No, I got, I, uh, I got a terminal disease, Joe, and I got not much. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. How can I help? Go away and make the, make the uh, final moments of my life uh, a little bit better. No, you won't do that. I mean, that would be so stupid. I, I, I can't imagine you would do that. You've threatened me how many times, and there's recordings of it all over the place. You, you show up at somebody's house after you've threatened them multiple times. I think the police call that a green light. Green light, over. Well, I guess it doesn't make any difference. Are, are the situation on? Well, I, I don't know. You just got to pick how you're going to do it. You'll never see it, though. No, I won't. Nope. Okay. Quit threatening people, you big bully. I just want to put that out there for you, Joe. It's all you do is threaten people. I wanted to listen to beautiful verbiage of N3ITN and how he deals so effectively with the Quarmers. wonder where he went. AC1DD. Seriously, you shouldn't be selling those reloads, man. You get into big trouble. I already told you they weren't reloads today. Do you think that a fucking idiot in a gun shop, do you think that a guy that's been in business for 40 years in a gun shop is going to accept reloads to sell? Stupid. I mean, how fucking can you assault me or cost me or attack me? Because I'm what? fucking trying to defend the goddamn frequency that's been the frequency we've been in these guns for a quick reload market for decades. I wouldn't think so, but that's what you said. Well, I do have it recorded. I probably have to look through it. So what did you say relative to reloads and consignment in a gun shop? What did you say? Clarify. I know that's not true. Recording of me. No, no, no. He's the one that invited me back in. He asked me a question. He said he's got a terminal disease, which is uh, very terrible. Uh, no, no, not at all, actually. I've been very busy over the last nine months, and I'm back. I just I got I went through my email. There must have been, I don't know, 150 emails in there from various hams. All sorts of weirdness going on. Recording sent to me. Anyway, just relax, Tommy, relax. Fuck you, Joe. Well, how's COVID down there? I mean, just listening the last couple of weeks, you know, before it seemed like the uh, the Southerners in general were kind of poo-pooing the uh, whole idea of COVID. And now it seems like it's invaded their little towns and they're uh, sort of changing their opinion. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All the rural people have been poo-pooing it and uh, everybody's coming up with it. Joe, I pass the fucking funeral home every time I go to town and back, right? There's not been any type of increase in the frequency of uh, cars out in the parking lot, numbers of people processed through the funeral home, and it's the only one around. 
They're not fucking dying of COVID, Joe. I haven't worn a fucking mask since, like, uh, probably the, the first time the shit was announced, and I, I quit wearing a mask about two weeks later, and I've not come down with anything. There's been a couple of members of my family, uh, right here, uh, distant family, that have had it or have come down with it or tested positive, and, and I don't believe the test is all. So it's not, it's a fucking hoax, Joe. No, I, I do not believe it's a hoax. I think you're 100% wrong. Uh, N1FM, you know that station? Uh, November 1, Fox Mike. Tom, Tom uh, Watley. Uh, he said on 39.27 yesterday that he tested positive on Sunday. So he's got COVID. Over. Yeah, I've heard that too. So does that mean that the test is positive and is correct? Or does that mean that he has the flu and somebody's trying to make money on it? Well, I don't know. I, uh, I'm a believer. I think it's out there. I think it's, uh, I think it's ripping through this uh, rural America right now because people. You know, I've heard of all these people having all these get-togethers for, you know, your your religion, Christianities, you know, Christmas. Of course, I don't go that way, but a lot of gatherings at Christmas. So get ready for a big surge over AC1 DD. So my affairs are always in order, Tommy. You never know. That's right. Don't answer the door. I never answer the door anyway. No, I just let the cameras record everything. It's uh, that's a safer way. KFAVD. <laughs> dial the, uh, you know, the local authorities when the cameras uh, all fail, over. I want to talk to N3IT, I want to talk him off the, off the cliff there. I'll stand by, AC1DD.
All right, Jim. All right, Tom. Have a good one. 73, KB3 YLS. We'll see you. Four more years. Four more years. He appoints them, and they come back and visit him and the beehive at Buffalo. There'll come a time one day when these guys that are doing the same thing here want to talk somewhere else. And we'll be right there to do the same thing back to them. Oh, boy. Good to have some. Make America great. Four more years. So, you know, I'm not really sure that's how it's going to happen. But, you know, um, I don't think that they actually go anywhere else to talk to anybody else. I think they're in there a little quick world. I think secret little messages are really wherever media or is the message to, you know, to get them to all be able to, you know, get here and be here and jump on our shit and blah, 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 blah. I think what's going to happen is um, their identities are going to be revealed, whether it's their call signs or their names or whatever. And then that's when the shit's going to stop because all of a sudden... All the little pussies that have been hiding behind their recordings and their their rebroadcasting and you know and all the bullshit that they do um, won't be able to hide behind that shroud anymore. They'll actually have been identified, and then they're going to be at the mercy of uh, you know us. I think by then, or at least to a point, um, we're going to have realized that the FCC is a volunteer monitoring system isn't working anymore. And that the volunteers that are operating the volunteer monitoring system are either corrupt or whatever they are, or dead. You know, and need to be replaced. And um, and I think at that juncture is when we'll see action. You know, it probably won't be like the good old CB days where we just go, you know, wrap a freaking rope around their feed lines and pull their shit out their bedroom window while we're towing it down the road and, you know, whatever. Um, you know, or beat the fuck out of them at, at the mall. I don't think it's going to come to that, because, you know, malls, are they even open anymore? You know, let's face it, these guys are probably in the basement, not, you know, some bedroom, but whatever. It, it doesn't really matter. The bottom line is, I think that is when the epiphany is going to, you know, or whatever, not the epiphany, but yeah, we could use epiphany there. You know, when, when they are identified is when the shit's going to, like, change. Because right now they get to hide behind anonymity. An 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 you know, they're anonymous. And an anonymity. An you know, they get to be big, bad, you know, music playing, recording playing, <laughs> fuck cards. And, and the irony, by the way, and I've said this before, but there's this irony that exists. It, it, the travelers, you know, the people that are dialing past the frequency on their way to or from or whatever. They're like, oh, I stay a really foul mouth. No, this is the shit that comes down in his mouth. And they just me for the shit to come out. Albeit, right? I mean, let's face it. I spew some shit. But I don't spew shit on Charlie, right? I'm spewing shit at the agitators and, and quirmers and dickheads and fucktards and leeches and jerk offs and dirtbags and assholes and faggots and motherfuckers that come out here night after fucking night to disrupt even the simplest of cusos that try to take place here. And it's just funny that I'm the 
the dirt bag. I'm the asshole, because, you know, I, I, I talk a lot. Unless the shit that comes out of his mouth, and holy fuck, dude, it's like, you know, it's like I'm the goddamn crammer. <laughs> but whatever. I'll see you guys later, 7th Street Century, I check in. That's only going to happen if Trump maintains office. Otherwise, the FCC will be just a little the Biden administration, force, unfortunately. Comedy show starts. What he does get is he's a few times worse than the farmers with that foul mouth of his. He just doesn't understand that. He thinks he's going to drive them off by cursing them. That doesn't drive them off. They like that. Totally ineffective. Misguided. Which include my call. And, you know, it would suggest that if you're listening to a snapshot and cherry picking, you're just getting that shit and not the... Snapshot? Are you kidding me, Tom? A snapshot? You come out here and you do that for two hours in a row. It's no snapshot. It's not taken out of context. But he's gone. He says he's going to let his license expire and he'll be gone. So that's a good thing. Safety one DD. Nobody's got the fucking balls to do 